When you sit down for a meal, how many of you really have a deep connection with what's on your plate, where it comes from, and how it impacts your health? What if it's way bigger than that? What if it goes beyond our own health and well-being? I envision, I reimagine our community where food is the vehicle that brings people together, that fosters environmental stewardship, and that generates uh, economic vitality. So if you look at food as an art form, you can do a couple different things with that. First, let's look at the form aspect of it. Some, view, some people view food as purely functional. For them, food equals fuel. For others, though, food is a whole art form. It's something to be enjoyed and savored bite by delicious bite. If you look at food through the lens of fine art, you can start to understand the extent to which food has been embedded in our lives from an historical point of view. But even for those among us who are passionate foodies, there's still somehow a disconnection between the food that's on our plate and the environmental, social, and economic health of our community. For most of us, food is still seen as very much of an individual or a one-dimensional form. Historically speaking, food has been at the essence of everything that we do for many years, dating way back to the Egyptians and even before that, our earliest forms of food. You can see that the Egyptians were total foodies because they sent their dearly departed off to the afterlife with things that were as fabulous as beer, bread, onions, beef, those kinds of things, which is a great thing for them. But still, there's that disconnect. So food has been, the, it covers the gamut of our obsessions. On the one hand, you have food being almost vilified for being the source of our woes, given that six out of the top 10 illnesses today are diet related. But then, on the completely other end of the spectrum, food almost takes on like a rock star, otherworldly status. It's everywhere today. Food is in, it's hot, it's like sexy. I mean, what's sexier than this right here? It's everywhere. It's in books, blogs, TVs, even entire channels have been devoted to food. I don't know about you, but I have a completely Pavlovian response, so if I start salivating, please excuse me. <laughs> However, with all the good that's being done in the community, with every, all the hype that's out there, still there is that fundamental disconnection. Now here's a completely different take on food. Carl Warner is an, uh, an author and he's also an artist. He has elevated food to a completely different level. Every single thing in this picture is food. So it's um, an interesting take to see how he has taken the creativity and attention to detail to literally transform food from one form into another right before our very eyes. So here's some food for thought. If we want to transform our local economy, I imagine that we can do that by changing simply how people think about, relate to, and consume food. So in my day job, I run the business incubator at University of Toledo. And we work with startup companies, all run them all through the uh, innovation ecosystem. And um, we talk to them about long-term sustainability all day long. So it occurred to me that we could kind of overlay the business pr principles of people, planet, profit, which is also referred to as the triple bottom line that some of you may be familiar with. In the business world, it allows a business to focus on the bottom line, but then also to be socially responsible, environmentally friendly, and economically vital. So if you take a look at that from the people portion of the, of the uh, the kind of the pie. Food is something that brings people together. It's a way to transform a community because something happens when people share a meal together. It's well known that people who do eat together, share meals, whether it's family or friends, tend to thrive more socially and environmentally. 
Also, when you get people together who have a relationship with the chef, the artisan, the producer, the grower, the farmer, whoever it is who is preparing their food, there's a sense of trust, a bond that's get, that gets built that just simply cannot be overstated. That kind of a bond also helps people to have a better understanding of where their food comes from. That leads us to the second piece of the puzzle, which is environmental prosperity. So when you take good care of the lands, that allows you to produce healthier foods. And simply put, healthy lands create healthy foods, and that helps us to get to healthy people. And now for the business end of eating well. There is all of the, the, the social and the environmental aspects of it. But from a business standpoint, and I guess a little bit to a certain extent environmental as well, when we start to eat from a local perspective, that allows us to do a great number of things. It allows us to cut down on the long distance transportation. It allows us to cut down on the synthetic fertilizers. So that in and of itself is one compelling reason for the local food economy. However, am I suggesting that we completely stop eating the avocados and the almonds and bananas that many of us love? No, not by a long shot. The bit, one of the biggest barriers that people have to eating local is that they just don't see the connection between what the food on their plate represents and how it impacts the community from an economic or an environmental or a social aspect. There's just a barrier there. But the bottom line is it just makes sense to eat food that's locally sourced and locally grown. It makes people feel better when they eat food that's fresh and local. And when you eat better, you feel better. When you feel better, you do better. From a business standpoint, it impacts individuals, businesses, and communities to take heed of this. Because you get people to eat better, and then they, their productivity and their creativity go up, and absenteeism and health care costs go down. Those are some of the indirect costs that people don't take into account when they take a look at what's on their plate. Also, from a different standpoint, from an economic point of view, it makes an impact for all of us to come together and spend money on our local economy. If all of us, if, if each of us just spent $5 at the farmer's market every week, that might produce some interesting results. But if all of us in our community spent $5 a week, that could bring in about $350 million into our local economy. So Ken Meter, who some of you also are familiar with, is a local, syst local food systems pioneer. And he's done numerous reports all over the country to demonstrate the impact of what local, local food provides. In Northwest Ohio alone, he found that $3.6 billion leaks out of our economy every year. So that means that food that gets farmed here gets exported, while what consumers eat gets imported. So when you look at that, that's a pretty staggering number for our community. So back to our friend Carl Warner. If we want to transform our community, and we can take into account the local the social, the environmental, and the economic aspects of what it means to eat well, that can help us to transform our whole economy and work together as individuals and as a community. So finally, the choices that we make matter. Whether it's choosing what food to buy, choosing how to take care of our lands and how to be good stewards of the land, or choosing where to spend our money, the choices that we make individually can collectively bring our community together and change how we view food. Now that's some delicious food for thought. Thank you. <laughs>